Hello, hello everybody. This is Professor West. Welcome back. As promised, today I'm going to show you how to use PyCharm, which is an integrated development environment, an IDE that's used for writing Python code. And it helps you to test the code and run the code and stuff like that. So um, in the last video, I showed you how to download and install it. And this time I'm going to show you how to run it. So far, I've clicked on it on my desktop and this is what came up. And you'll notice that they have a tip of the day. You can turn that off if you uncheck this box right here and it won't come up every time. Or you could click next tip and read all the different tips that they have. Uh, I'm just gonna close it for now. So if you want to start a program, the very first thing you need to do is come over to where you see file and click on it and you see new project. A project is like a, a whole encompassing thing and your actual program will be part of the project. So we start with a whole new project and then we add what we need into it. And so right off the bat, it's giving me the option to save it and to name it. I'm changing the name after this slash. Um, right now it says untitled. I don't want to call it untitled. So I'm going to call it something like Hello World 01 because that's typically the first program that you write is the hello world program whenever you're learning a new programming language and so that's the first one I'm gonna do here so I've changed the name to hello world 01 and left the rest which you can change this is uh, the rest of it's gonna tell it where to save the program and uh, you can change that if you want I clicked OK and or create and now I come up with a couple options how would you like to open the project would you like it in a new window or would you like it in the current window or would you like to add it to the current project I don't want to add it to the current project because I want it to be a whole new project so I'm going to leave it where it says open in the current window and this should replace the current project as you see there it takes it a few seconds it's got to go through its list and now I have my project here um, in this in the left window you have several different options you have the project that I just created uh, which is called hello world 01 you have the external libraries you have scratches and consoles we'll get to all that later and then in this other window over here you see where it says search everywhere um, go to file this is if you want to uh, if you already have a program written somewhere and you want to go out and find it and bring it in um, to this project which we're not going to do at this point so what you would do next it's point right here to the hello world 01 project and right click on it and this box comes up I'm gonna choose new and then I'm gonna move all the way over and I'm gonna say file and it's gonna ask me what I wanna call this file and I'm just gonna call it the same hello oops, hello world 01 the file is where you're actually gonna write your code so make sure you put .py at the end because this is a Python file and notice now this area over here is changed um, up here at the top this is a tab and it says hello world 01.py and then here's all the space if I had several then there would be different tabs here just like if you're in Windows Explorer or, or Google Chrome or whatever and you're searching different websites um, all the different tabs across whichever one you click on would be what <clears throat> what appears here in the window since I only have the one, then this is all going to be part of that by default. So next thing I'm going to want to do is actually write my Python code. So for this first one, we're just going to have it output hello world. It's a very simple um, program. So we're going to write the word print. This is an output statement. And uh, anytime the system comes across the word print, it automatically um, knows that it's going to output it to the screen. Then I put an open parentheses and I put a single quote. And as I did, it went ahead and put the matching um, close. Let me, uh, I had the thing over it. Let me uh, delete that and show you again. Oops. Print. When I put the open parentheses, notice it goes ahead and puts the close parentheses there. And then when I put the quote, it puts the second quote there for me so that it has one at the beginning and one at the end of whatever I'm doing and I'm gonna put hello world uh, with a few exclamation points why not and that's it this is all this program supposed to do is output hello world 
So if we want to run it, we can go up to run. And, oh, actually, you cannot, this is important, on the very last line of code, you cannot have the cursor at the end of the line of code. You have to hit the enter key at least one time, and that way it knows that that's the end. So if it's still on the line of code, now I could leave it there as long as I've already hit the enter key once, because hitting the enter key adds a new line command. So as long as it's there, as long as I've hit the enter key at least once, it'll work. But if I try to go down past that, notice how it won't let me. If I hit the enter key several times, then it'll let me. Now I can move up and down. But as long as as long as um, as long as I have at least one line after my last line of code, it'll let me run it. Now, when I run, it comes up and it says, what do I want to run or what I want to do? And I just want it to run the Hello World program. And here it comes. It comes up. It shows me where it found the program. And then here's the output. Hello World with some exclamation points. So I want to point something out here. Let me do another print statement. Print. And I'm going to use double quotes this time. Hello again. Because in Python, something very interesting happens that doesn't happen in a lot of other languages. Notice it printed both the statements. In Python, it doesn't care if I use a double quote or a single quote as long as I'm consistent on that line. So, um, in the first one I used single quotes at the beginning and the end, and then the second one I used double quotes at the beginning and the end. Had I, had I got them mixed up and I did a single quote and put hello um, testing line and then did a double quote, Now it comes up with a big red squiggly line underneath it because it doesn't understand. It doesn't. It can't figure out why I have a double quote here, when I, and a single quote here. So it won't let me run this. If I try to run it, it's going to come up and it's going to give me all this error message down here and tell me that you can't do that. So once again, as long as they're the same, it doesn't care which way they are. And that's it. That is a basic program that's running. Now I've got three lines of code that I've output here. So, so now let's uh, change it up just a little bit. Let's add a couple more things here. Let's say I want to create a variable, and a variable is just something that'll hold a value. So I put x equals 1. The computer now understands that anytime it sees just an x, that it's going to be an integer, which is a number, and have the value of 1. So I could say if x equals equals 1, and this is a simple if statement. This is something that we'll get to in probably the third week of class. Um, in the second week, we'll have val uh, variables. And in the third week, we'll have if statements. I just wanted to give you an idea of what the program would look like. And then I could say print x, oops, print x is 1. So... Oops, I gotta have a colon after the one to let it know. And now if I run it, and it says x is one. If I change that so that x is not one, let's say x is two, but it's still gonna test to see if x is one, now when I run it, that line doesn't appear. So this is just basic programs. As I said, we'll get into more of this later. There's one other thing I wanted to mention, and that's a comment. Let's say I put a hashtag, which is a pound sign in programming, which is a shift in the number three, and then I could put, this is uh, meant to output some text. Oops. And notice, I have had to have a space after the hashtag. When I run this program, what's going to happen now is that line, this is meant to output some text, is gone. That's because I put a hashtag or a, or a pound sign in front of it. Anything after that on this line is a comment. So I could come here and I could do the same thing. Um, more comments. When I run the program, it runs, it'll run this line 
right up until it gets to that pound sign, and then everything after that's ignored. And we do this in the programming world so that we can leave ourselves tips or clues about what the code's doing, because sometimes code can be really complex. So it's like making a little note to yourself that, hey, this section's going to be doing this. Well, this section's going to be doing that. And it'll help you as you go to um, remember, oh, what was I doing up there? Oh, yeah, here's what I was doing, instead of having to try to figure it out by looking at the code. So these are the basics of a program, and I hope you've uh, learned some stuff here. And make sure to check back because I'm about to submit some more videos up. And uh, we're going to get into some more of this uh, Python programming. So for now, just play around with this stuff. Have some fun with it and see what you can do. And uh, I'll check back. Don't forget to um, join my YouTube channel. Always happy to have people on there. And if you have any questions or comments, I always love to hear them. So let me know. And I'll see you in the next segment. All right, bye.